Hey everyone, after a short break, I'm happy to welcome you to yet another episode of our interview series. Our today's guest is going to be Mats Nielsen, the frontman of a Swedish band Brothers of Metal, who will talk about the band's roots, formation and the upcoming third studio album. As always, don't forget to subscribe both here and on Instagram to stay tuned with the updates. Here you go. When we believe we are but one, we come together. We sail the seas, we're touching ground, we fight whenever, whenever. Hey Matt, how's it going, man? Hello, how are you? All is good, all is good. Uh, thanks. Nice. Yeah, thanks for jumping in a call with me, man. I finally, finally found time for this. <laughs> Yeah, 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 totally slipped my mind. Same thing here. I was, uh, I was the same as you. You know, once the quarantine, I feel like kind of loosens out a little bit. You start getting into a lot of activities all at once, so it's kind of, yeah. kind of hard. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Are you in Sweden right now, actually? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So how's it going there with the quarantine and everything? Yeah, all good. Okay. Like there's no no um like it's been in Sweden it's been kind of open mm -hmm. uh, with not too many restrictions uh, but yeah like I've been I I work as a teacher as well and mm -hmm. and we've been doing like this distance thing like you know Google Meets and all mm -hmm. that yeah. jazz so it's been been a bit different. Yeah, I can imagine. Is, is you were you said you were working as a teacher? Uh, where in a in a school, high school, or H high school? Yeah. Oh, nice. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty cool. Do you like working with kids? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, of course. But it, it has its ups and downs, of course. Like, yeah, but yeah, I like it. Okay, that's good. Uh, Good, good. So, what keeps you sane, you know, in addition to uh, being a teacher at this time, musically especially? What, what is the band up to, and how are you guys coping with all of this? Yeah, it's been uh, like <clears throat> it's been uh, weird times for sure. Like we we had to, or we didn't have to cancel, but uh, a lot of uh, our shows this summer were or all of the shows were cancelled. Like we finally were to play Vakken, that got cancelled, and mm. uh, we. What date is it? Yeah, I think this week we would have played in Spain, or next mm. week. All that got cancelled, of course, and uh, some plans for the autumn also got cancelled. Um, we will see. How long it it keeps canceling, like uh, how how long the shows keeps canceling out? But hopefully, like we booked the tour now for next April. Yep. Uh, hopefully that one will will happen. But yeah, you, re you really don't know. But you can't stop as well. You need to plan stuff and and so on. Absolutely. We'll see. Absolutely. But you guys keep in touch. Are you guys close? Physically, I mean, ter uh, territory wise. Yeah, all but uh, one live pretty close by, but we haven't really been uh, rehearsing or so. We, mm -hmm. We've been writing uh, some new stuff on, mm -hmm. um, like on a distance uh, mostly. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like, and some, some nights, I mean, a couple of us hang out and make some music but um yeah we're we're slowly but steadily working our way to the third album oh that's good good to hear um and you know in general i feel like this entire coronavirus pandemic obviously has had a major impact on all spheres of life right i mean except for digital yeah. uh, i mean ed everyone has been impacted but i feel like in general entertainment and music industry in particular has been, you know, has been hit the most, you know, most likely. So what do you think personally will happen to the music industry and especially the heavy metal one, you know, after the pandemic is over? Will we be able to go back to normal or there will be more online shows and stuff like that? 
the mercenary. Hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's fucking boring with online shows. Um, I don't know. Uh, now I think. Hopefully it will go back to somewhat of a normal state. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it will uh, mm -hmm. as soon as we can, we can solve this. Um, like, I'm guessing there needs to be some sort of vaccine before we before we can start doing it properly again. Um, but yeah, I think I think we'll we'll go go back for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I really hope to uh, hope hope it will. I'm also pretty sure that sometime next year we will have a lot of new heavy metal records. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of people are holding on to this one, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 and like one people are holding on to, they don't want to release it now because they can't promote it with a tour Absolutely. and so on, uh, and also. Uh, people are writing way more since they are, aren't out touring and playing. Yeah. So people are bored. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. I, um, so roughly half a year ago, right? You released uh, the Endless Saga, your second studio album. And uh, uh, how was the process different? You know, given that you've been working on it its entirety with the label, you know, with the AFM. Uh, unlike you know the prophecy of Ragnarok, was it different at all? And um, if so, how different was it? For us, it was kind of different, of course, because it's our second album. The first album, I mean, you have years writing on the first album because, yeah, you like when we started, we didn't even know we would have an album. So after a couple of years, we had an album, mm -hmm. and then we released it and so on uh this time around we knew okay we're gonna we're gonna make an album and we have this amount of time uh, to do it and of course you also have um like people expect a certain style and sound and so on from listening to the first album um so yeah it was was different but i wouldn't say it was um like the, pr the process was the same. It was just more, um, how do you say, like uh, compact. Right. Like it was during a shorter period. Yeah, you had of to time. structure it, I, I imagine, right? A little bit more. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Uh, has uh, has the label been helpful? Mm, we like to do things ourselves. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, uh, but we we want to keep the label. I wouldn't say out. Uh, but during some parts, like writing and so on, we don't want to involve the label more so when, okay, we got these songs, uh, like I think we had, I can't remember how many songs are on the album, like, I don't know, 13 or so, yeah, 12, like that, yeah. 12 or 13 tracks, maybe 11, I don't know, but we had maybe three or four more uh, that didn't, fit okay. onto the record like you have a time limit so uh which songs should, would you have picked for this album and so on mm -hmm. um so and of course they help us a lot with like distribution and uh, like like pr and and all that jazz yeah, like uh yeah that's the the best part of having a having a label, I think, because they have people who knows people <laughs> more or less. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And in yeah. terms of the writing process, okay, one question I I gotta ask this because I I wonder this a lot about you know bands with uh, with a lot of band members because you guys are an eight piece, right? Um, yeah. How how is the writing process with so many heads and ideas, and who? puts it all together in the end. Uh, so we have basically, like, this is how it usually works. There are exceptions, mm -hmm. but usually we have three different songwriters. Johan, the drummer, mm -hmm. uh, David and Mick, uh, two of the guitarists. Mm -hmm. uh, they write most of the music, like, most of it. Uh, so usually what happens is that one of them has an idea for a song and like basically makes a 
rough version of a, it can be an intro, a chorus, something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then um, show it to someone else. Uh, if they get feeling for it, they start working more on mm -hmm. it. And um, then uh, me, Ulva, and Jocke, or two of us, or one of us, or whatever starts writing mm -hmm. the lyrics mm -hmm. to it. Um, that's usually how it's done. And then when basically the rough version of the song is done and the lyrics are roughly there, people are invited to like add stuff and, oh, I think uh, here we could have this sort of melody and so on. And so everyone puts their, mm -hmm. their uh, fingerprints in, in the music, more or less. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. It, yeah, like it's and sometimes we have someone. Oh, I did the song. It's done here. <laughs> like, <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Job so, done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we just tweak a little bit. Like, I think it's. We all think it's kind of important that everyone puts their signature into the songs. I think, mm -hmm. um, so, and that usually happens towards the end of the writing. Okay, makes sense. And in terms of the uh, nice month, by the way, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, in terms of the third album that you said is in the works already, how how many songs are there yet uh, already, you know, and at what stage they are, roughly? Uh, so we have a couple of songs, like I said, three or four songs from the last album. Yeah, that they made that, cut. Yeah, so. that, we might use, mm -hmm. I don't know if we will use all of them or so. We'll mm -hmm. see what we, we will release them in one way or another, but not sure they will fit onto the album. Uh, it's very early, uh, so we, we don't really, like we have a couple of songs, um, but not so many of them have lyrics on them yet. Mm -hmm. So we're, um, I've been thinking a bit of possible concepts and and so on to uh, like to make a red line through mm -hmm. through all the songs but um we'll see where, where it end up it's yeah a lot of writing is going on but we haven't finished anything really yet and there's no rush really yeah. either i think we aim to release something late uh, next year mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i mean so, you just released uh, the endless side unfortunately you weren't being uh, you know you weren't able to go uh, on a huge tour you know supporting it with the coronavirus and everything as you said you know with this summer and stuff we, yeah. and we were kind of lucky since we went on the tour yeah in you, you went on the tour but you would support you know yeah. th through this summer as well you know I, yeah 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 so there is still some time uh for for the fans to enjoy the second one i imagine and uh, you know, in terms of the um, the the red line that you mentioned, or just the general feel, will it be you know the logical continuation of Endless Saga? You feel like, or you guys are gonna experiment with a different sound and a different you know themes? Uh, that's a bit too early to say. I think <laughs> I don't know. Like we haven't decided anything yet. We now we're just basically puking out ideas <laughs> and and see what sticks basically like uh, we, we have no no um super intricate plan we're working after or so we, mm -hmm. we'll see like there there are tons of ideas okay, at pretty, least very cool very cool man and you know speaking about experimenting and stuff like that i mean brothers of metal has three vocalists uh, the same amount of guitar players and obviously a rhythm section. Uh, yeah. You know, has this been done on purpose so you have this wide musical range and a vocal range, or it just no? It should happen. <laughs> no, it just happened. Like we're all friends, so um, there happen to be three guitar players mm -hmm. and three vocalists and then we needed a drummer and the bass like so two of the guitar players the bass player and Jokke um, the other male mm -hmm. vocalist yeah. they were, were in a band before mm -hmm. um, like a melodic death metal band mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they 
lost their drummer like he moved away and and didn't want to play drums anymore mm -hmm. so basically after that uh, they want, wanted to play something and yeah it's basically we're, we're all friends and yeah it could have we couldn't have could have ended up with four guitar players or <laughs> four things like it would we don't know we're have you had just more friends fun. yeah <laughs> Yeah, we're, it, there's no plan behind it, or so it's, yeah, it's just fun. Right, that's pretty cool. So it does look like you guys, uh, you know, unlike some other bands, uh, there was no purpose to, you know, form a band and then become friends. It, it was quite the opposite, right? I mean, you guys were hanging yeah. out, happened to be musicians, and it just kind of emerged out of this one, yeah? Yeah, correct. Yeah, and like we, it's just a fluke it became metal as well like it not really a fluke all of us really love metal and, and have been playing metal in different bands since forever but like we do when we party we usually go home to one of the guys with a home studio like you one mickey or david as mm -hmm. i said before and then we drink and and we record music like mm -hmm. just for fun so one night we can uh, say oh let's make a snoop dog song or <laughs> uh, let's uh, make uh, billy eilish how, how would uh, that sound if we did a billy eilish song uh, for example and uh, the first song we ever made was uh, after going to the cinema and we watched the first Thor movie uh -huh. uh, and uh, we said let's make a song about Thor a song that man world would be proud of <laughs> so and uh, yeah basically that's how we started because yeah pe people were like oh this sounds quite cool we should probably do something <laughs> something more like this and then Jocke got a call from a local how do you say um, club owner yeah. and uh, he asked uh, hey can you guys uh, play here with Temporary the, the other the melodic death metal band mm -hmm. I I said uh, mentioned earlier and Jocke were like yeah we, we, um, we have this new project going because they lost their drummer mm -hmm. as I said uh, so he sent him Son of Odin Mm -hmm. um, and the club owner said, yeah, yeah, sure, play, play with that, it's going to be great. Uh, can you play 30 minutes? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so I book you for, uh, or you play here in two weeks. And we only had that song, <laughs> so in two weeks we had to write, like, we didn't play any covers, so we wrote... Yggdrasil, Fire, Blood and Steel, uh, Tyr and Gods of War, I think, uh -huh. as well. Uh, to to um, so we had five songs to play live at least. Um, so it's just a fluke basically that we ended up as a band. Great man. I mean, it, it it is a great story. I mean, it is one of those that you know you kind of relax, chill out, and it all falls into places. I mean, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but what I I gotta tell you, man, you gotta release some of those Snoop Dogg and Billie Eilish songs <laughs> if you have them still somewhere. <laughs> if not, send yeah. it over to me. I'll pretend they are mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> see there's tons of them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's that would be really fun. Um, I gotta tell him though. Um, my favorite part about Brothers of Metal is watching your videos. Seriously, okay. I, I I love it. They're both exciting. They're entertaining. I mean, goes well with the music and everything. But the most of it, I mean, it looks like you guys are having a lot, a lot of fun. You know, and now you told me that you guys were friends, all of you before starting the band. So it does make sense. But um. Is that actually true? Do you guys have fun while you know shooting the videos? And uh, who writes the you know the ideas and scenarios? Uh, yeah, so the first two videos we did, uh, excluding any lyric videos or so on, was um, Prophecy of Ragnarök and um, Yggdrasil, mm -hmm. and those two were shot by Patrick Julius. That's mm -hmm. uh, he is kind of famous for yeah. his Amaranth and Arch Enemy and Inflames. Yeah, Inflames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
he's the he's the guy to do metal videos yeah, here yeah. in Sweden, basically. Uh, but we didn't really like that. Um, like her his way of working, basically. Mm -hmm. We we like nothing bad about uh, Patrick. He's a fantastic guy. Yeah. Uh, but we we I think we needed someone with more. Um, that we knew better, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I went to a film school uh, before, uh, like uh, university, I studied film. So I knew a couple of guys um, since then. Uh, so we talked to one of my old classmates uh, that started his own company, and he's been shooting the rest of the videos, like mm -hmm. Mead Song, Fire, Blood and Steel, mm -hmm. um, and those, uh, what they would do, one and yeah. Njord. Yeah. Uh, we'll see who who shoots the next ones, but uh, I think the whole band felt like that was a better fit. Like, and we gave him a lot of freedom in like mm -hmm. coming up with ideas, and we can have a, a nice communication on what ideas we want to do because mm -hmm. we want to be like. Have you seen the movie like uh, Hot Rod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. Like stupid uh, humor, yeah. uh, and we want to be like always on the edge between serious and stupid, more or less. And so he gets that balancing act really well, um, and it's really easy for us to have that kind of communication with him. Mm -hmm. To and he get he comes up with great ideas for stupid things we can do. No, yeah, they are Basically. entertaining, they are really cool. Uh, I actually, yep. yeah. You know, and you. in terms of the lyric video that you guys released just recently, what, a couple of weeks ago, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. A month. Um, uh, wh who did that and what was the idea behind it? Uh, it's the same guy that did right. our first lyric lyric video, not the same guy that does the other mm -hmm. uh, the, the feature, or not the feature, but the, how do you say, like the filmed yeah. videos. Um, yeah, it's, uh, all, it's also a friend from school, not mm -hmm. uh, from my school, but from music school. Some of the guys went to and he started making videos mm -hmm. instead of playing music, more or less. Um, yeah, he's a great guy, and we wanted him to, like, we wanted to make more um, lyric videos, and it fitted better than to go on a movie set now, basically, mm -hmm. with the corona and, the and everything. Kind of so, yeah, so that's it, basically. Yeah. Um, a couple more questions. I'm I'm very conscious of your time. Um, right. No worries. No worries. <laughs> uh, I... Sure. And uh, you know, in terms of you mentioned, you know, the that you guys all and this is pretty obvious are into metal, uh, but at the same time you've listened to a variety of genres. What are your personal yeah. musical influences? Who are the favorite bands, and whom do you look up to? Me. Um... Yeah, it's so many. I don't know where to start. <laughs> like, uh, I'm I'm a live guy. Yeah. Uh, like, I Same love here. playing playing live, and uh, I love going to live shows. So, I, therefore, I also love great like entertainers, and Performing I'm also the, like the front man yeah. when we're playing live. So, for me, uh, those kind of guys. Um, are the best mm -hmm. but, and great show like mm -hmm. i want to do great shows basically mm -hmm. so uh, take um like of course i love judas priest and kiss and all of those like classic yeah. hard rock and heavy metal bands um but also like as a front man i would say um have you seen Danko jones for example no actually i've heard of him but never uh never had a chance yeah. to yeah if, if if you have the chance go go watch danko jones he, mm -hmm. he's like the one of the smartest frontmen mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. and pre pretty great music as well also you have uh, david townsend also a great musician but also a great frontman mm -hmm. uh, so funny and so great so those are great, great inspirations for me, at least uh, when it comes to to live music. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it kind of resonates with. Uh, I believe it was Gene Simmons uh, 
said a couple of years ago that, you know, he loves a lot of modern rock and metal bands, but he does not understand why do they have to be so serious. Music is supposed to entertain people and live shows are supposed to, you know, have a production and have a wow effect and kind of resonates with what you just said for me personally. Yeah, yeah, I think I think uh, it's spot on. It, it should be like, of course, we don't take ourselves too seriously. But I think that's quite obvious, but it should also like people come and and uh, pay money to go to our show. Yeah. They should be entertained like they pay to get entertained. So, Absolutely. of course, we want to entertain them in the best way possible. Absolutely. When you go to a theater, you want to see a performance. You want to see people act and not just reading, you know, the script. Yeah. This is the same way. Yeah. I completely agree with you. And I'm a huge, uh, you know, live show guy. Uh, I mean, I, in terms of... I cannot appreciate a band to the fullest unless I see them live because that's where I feel I get a connection with the band, you know. Um, but um, and actually talking about uh, talking about the live show performance, the and you briefly touched on this one. Um, your joint tour with Orden Organ and Windrose. I actually spoke to yeah. Francesco a couple of months ago of Windrose. He's a great guy, by the way. Um, uh, are you guys excited to hit the road again? Uh, it seems like a very cool act for those into you know heroic power metal uh, uh, stuff yeah I think it's gonna be great um, I have no idea how they like I, I met some of the guys in Orden Ogan never met anyone from from Windrose uh, I'm sure we're gonna have a blast on the tour bus for <laughs> sure but uh, yeah I, I really have no idea um, but yeah we're we're easy going so it's should should be great fun I think yeah absolutely and uh, as I said Francesco is a great guy so I'm sure you will get, get, get along and it's gonna be fun Eidman, uh, as I promised, not to not too long to not take up m much of your time, but you got to tell me, you know, one crazy ass uh, touring story uh, or live show experience story or just one show that got stuck in your head the most and or one experience that you cherish and you want to share with the rest of the you know, listeners. I don't know. There's a couple. <laughs> um, I've got time, man. <laughs> like, for sure, the, the best place we played so far i think is z7 in switzerland mm -hmm. uh the whole everything was perfect there like the stage the audience everything but nothing super cool happened or so uh <laughs> when we played in uh, in paris uh on the tour in january uh our bold guitarist um pad um he got uh, like a stomach flu yeah, like sure. we were we went to a restaurant uh, earlier on the day and he ate some fish and got sick from it so like 15 minutes before the the show he basically puked and yeah. like yeah that's we're yeah. really really sick and all of us were like okay keep distance we can't get <laughs> like a fucking stomach flu going on the bus if it's yeah. contagious or so like that would that would suck yeah, bad absolutely. But, but we thought uh, it's, it's probably probably just uh, something he ate the fish or so mm -hmm. so uh, <clears throat> he had a bucket on the side of the stage and he said basically okay um I, uh, I have some signs for you. Uh, basically, if I do uh, this, and uh, he made th thumbs up, uh, then he will uh, go away uh, and and uh, have to take a shit or something like that. <laughs> but he will he will come back. But if he smiles and do and waves, he already shut himself and <laughs> will not come back. But it's like, Luckily, he didn't have to wait at us, but uh, that was his, his sign, at least. I think that's uh, kind of fun. It's uh, fun. <laughs> yep. Great times, man. Great times. I'm really excited, you know, for, for this tour and, uh, you know, for the entire situation to get better and for metal to hit the stages again all around the world. And hopefully we'll get back to uh, to normal very soon. Yeah. 
Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I'm excited to catch you guys live. I uh, haven't seen you yet, but uh, hopefully we'll do next summer or somewhere around that time. Yeah, hopefully we will take a, a trip east as well. Like yeah. we we had uh, some plans on going like, you know, Helsinki, mm -hmm. Moscow, St. Petersburg, maybe Kiev, and then uh, fly off to Japan or so and, mm -hmm. and do something like that, like lose plans, nothing booked or so. But we had plans on, on doing that, but we need to postpone that a bit. <laughs> yeah, sadly enough. Unfortunately, yes. Eidman, yeah. uh, any last message to the fans? Any and any listeners you want to share with them? Uh, no, not really. Like, thank you so much for for listening and spread the word. If you if you like the music, share it with your friends and yeah, keep on staying true. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, man, and have a great day. Thanks, bro. Take care.